In this video, we're going to take a look at the three most common ways for devices in a computer to send information to a CPU, which are interrupts, polling-based systems, and finally DMA. Okay, um, first of all, let's take a look at the interrupt. So here's how an interrupt-based system works. Let's say we have a device in a computer. It could be anything, right? It could be a keyboard, it could be a hard drive, whatever. And then we've also got a CPU. And that device, uh, for some reason, needs to send information to the CPU, right? This device has some information that needs to end up at the CPU for some reason. What this device will then do, if it's an interrupt-based system, is it will send a signal to the CPU saying, hey, I want your attention right now. And the CPU will then stop doing whatever it's doing at that point, And it will then take a look at that signal. So if your device is a keyboard, that means if you press a key on that keyboard, the keyboard will send a signal to the CPU, which interrupts the CPU, right? It it asks the CPU for attention and it asks the CPU to stop whatever it's doing and listen to the keyboard basically. And the CPU will then stop and it will see, oh, a key has been pressed. That's how the interrupt system works. Then there is also the polling based system. Now the polling based system works kind of in the opposite way, okay? In a polling based system, the device is very shy, basically. That's how I like to describe it. The device can't ask for attention from the CPU on its own. It can only reply to requests from the CPU. So in a polling-based system, the CPU will constantly be asking the device for a status update. So in this situation, if your device is a keyboard, the CPU will constantly ask the keyboard, has anything happened yet? Has anything happened yet? Has anything happened yet? And if you, if you happen to press a key at that point, the keyboard will reply to the CPU saying, yes, a key has been pressed. Now you can imagine that this adds latency because when you press the keyboard, when you press a key on the keyboard, that doesn't mean that you press the key exactly at the same moment that the CPU was asking for the information. It might take another few milliseconds before the CPU does another request, right? So this polling system has way more latency than an interrupt-based system. Now actually, USB peripherals, so USB keyboards, USB mice, use this polling system. So if you use USB peripherals, you have more latency than when you have PS2 peripherals. So PS2 peripherals are these, these old keyboards and mice with these little green and, and purple round connectors on them. Right? Those can actually send interrupts to the CPU and therefore have a much lower latency. Although with modern computers the polling rates are so high and the processors are very fast so in the real world you won't notice this difference at all. Now some people would argue that USB is not entirely polling based because the polling is actually not done by the CPU itself it's done by a USB controller and the USB controller is connected to the CPU through an interrupt based system. So the communication between the keyboard and the controller is polling based, but the communication between the controller and the CPU is interrupt based. But of course, that doesn't fix the latency issue. The last system that we're going to discuss in this video is DMA, which stands for Direct Memory Access. And that means exactly what you would expect it to be. In a direct memory access situation, the device is able to access the memory of the computer without the CPU being involved at all. Let's take, an, take the keyboard again as the example, although that's not really how it works. You can't have a DMA keyboard, we'll talk about that later on, but it might work for the example, okay? So what this would mean is that you are working on a text document on your computer and that text document has a certain amount of memory reserved to it in, in your computer memory. And what, it, what this means is that when you press the letter K on the keyboard, the keyboard can actually access this memory and it can then put that letter into your text document, so into that memory, without the CPU having to do anything at all. 
So it bypasses the CPU completely, which is even faster than an interrupt-based system. Now, of course, with the keyboard, this is not really possible because then the keyboard has to know where to put things in the memory, uh, which it doesn't. So DMA isn't used for keyboards and peripherals and things like that, but it is used for other things. So there you go. Now you know exactly what an interrupt is, what polling is, and also what DMA is, and what the differences are between these three systems. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.